This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. The opinions expressed in this episode are not to be construed as medical advice. Welcome to Demystify Beauty. I'm Dr. Paul Massif and my co-host Mackenzie. I think she's at QVC this week, so I have the pleasure of speaking to the world's, you know, foremost, the most incredible cosmetic dental surgeon uh, that I know uh, does the most incredible incredible teeth, especially when you go to your his Instagram, you're going to see the most incredible before and afters. But that's, remember, this is about beauty. We're going to talk about teeth and really what they do. We want to get a nice abbreviated version to really make it um, interesting for everyone. But at the same point, um, I do want to go through a brief little history uh, with Bill. And everyone, this is Dr. Bill Dorfman, my buddy, known for many years, Bill Sam. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for having me on your show, Paul. Hey, you still have yours, your podcast? Yeah, my podcast, believe it or not, is ranked in the top two and a half percentile of all podcasts worldwide. It's called Meet the Mentor. And I think the reason that happened was a mistake, but I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> we Well, you know why? What I did was... I interviewed a lot of really notable people from my LEAP program, uh, the program that you've come and yeah. spoken at. And so we, we, we went straight out of the gate with you know, Anthony Hopkins, Mark Wahlberg, Eva Longoria, Usher, um, um, Jason Alexander, Kathy Bates, Paula Abdul, and, and all these big names which people knew. And so, you know, they started listening to the podcast and it's just e exploded. And then every year we add on more Richard Branson. Uh, it, it's been pretty phenomenal. Yeah, you, you got You have some great guests there. And as a matter of fact, since you mentioned the word leap. In one minute. Can you tell us what leap is? Let me give you the precursor. My mantra for life is learn so you can earn and then return. And I am definitely in the return phase of my life. And LEAP is, is, is a program that we created 16 years mm -hmm. ago. It's been at UCLA. It's an entrepreneurship leadership program for high school and college kids where we basically teach kids the skills that they need to be successful in life that you don't necessarily learn in school. And we do it through small workshops, through bringing in mentors and guests. And yep. you know this program really changes kids' lives. We teach them time management, money management, um, how to write a resume, how to apply for a job, public speaking. Uh, I do a whole thing on health and fitness, and uh, it, it's pretty phenomenal. Next year will be the first year we're switching to USC because they're turning UCLA into an Olympic village. Uh, so we'll be at USC. It will be July 21st to the 27th. I already have a commitment from Anthony Hopkins is coming back. Jason Alexander is coming back. Amy Adams is coming next year. Shay Mitchell is coming next year. And uh, Taylor Zachar Perez is coming, who is well known amongst a bunch of kids. And anyhow, it'll be it'll be a phenomenal program. Well, that's one thing that you do. You know, you've done so many things with your life. But what I want to jump into, since that's what this is about, is beauty. And, but also how beauty can um, be synergistic with function. And the thing is, how did you get into what you do, the cosmetic side of dentistry? You know, it's funny, Paul. You go to dental school and you learn how to do a lot of things. Root canals, not so much fun. Nobody ever stood up, hugged the dentist and said, oh, you did such a great root canal on me. Doesn't happen, you know. But the very first time when I was a student and I had a kid come in and he chipped his front tooth off and I rebuilt it with bonding and I, I knew that was it. I mean, that kid looked in the mirror and I'd never seen a happier face in my life. And I said, this is what I want to do for people. I want to make them have a beautiful smile so they could be happy. I just finished a case. Uh, sorry, I was a little bit late coming down. This is a man. He He's our age, Paul. He has had the worst teeth ever his whole life. 
and today was was the crowning glory. We we finished his case, and um, he came in today, and we put in his upper teeth, and uh, um, I wonder if, if, if you can actually see this, but this is an implant bridge, but look, I mean, for the first time in this guy's life, I'm screwing this in right now, for the first time in this guy's life as an adult, he actually has like a really, really beautiful smile. And like, you can't tell that these are implants. Look at that. When he smiles, it's just awesome, you know? And I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing. Nice. And, and he just did kind of a little testimonial for me. And he just said, you know, I didn't even realize how this would change my life. You know, a, a smile's the most important thing. When we did Extreme Makeover, and these people came in, and they got nipped and tucked and everything else in the world, at the end of the day, when you said to them, what was the biggest impact? Most of them said their smile. Now, uh, unless, of course, you were involved and you did their nose, but for most of these people, their teeth were so bad it, 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 it hindered their lifestyle, their eating, their sleeping, their self-confidence, everything. And when we changed their teeth and gave them like a beautiful smile, it, it was riveting. And, you know, it, that's the part that got me excited is, you know, I love changing people's lives just like you do, too. I mean, I watch you on Botched. I mean, these people come in and they're they're a mess and, and, and they're desperate and you give them the ability to feel normal again, which is huge. Yeah. I mean, of course that is. I mean, listen, I've been a patient of yours for God, probably about a good 15 years and everyone in my family comes in and you know, I think one of the most important things. So let's say we're talking to someone who's one of our listeners, maybe that doesn't know much about teeth. Even maybe they go to a dentist once a year. Or, or even less frequent. What, for keeping your teeth looking great, for the simplest, starting off with the simplest, someone who's already got decent teeth, maybe they're discolored, maybe they don't go to the dentist enough and have a good cleaning, um, which of course, I mean, I go to your office because I like having them white all the time, not because I'm even the whitener, just by the way your doctor's and you take care of the teeth there, they actually are white just from polishing, which I've never seen that before. Polishing doesn't usually give you that. Usually you have to really white your teeth, but you've also developed, if I'm not mistaken, Zoom. Right. So I, I would say- Yeah, so let's go through yeah, the basics. Probably the, the minimal basic thing you should do is brush and floss every day. And you know, I, I was on The View, and Joy said to me, Doc, do I really have to floss my teeth? I said, Joy, just floss the ones you want to keep. <laughs> right? So, yes, but, but here's that the is thing. so funny. When you oh. brush your teeth, you're only <laughs> really brushing the front and the back. Yes. The area where you get yeah. most of the decay is in between. So the most detrimental bacteria is still sitting in between your teeth, right? So yeah, you do need to floss, right? So if you said to me, you know, what's the minimal basic thing you should do? Brush and floss after every meal, you know, go to the dentist twice a year. Why? Well, if, if, if people say, well, nothing hurts. Well, good, <laughs> you know, because if you have a little cavity, we can fix that. By the time it hurts, that's not good. That's not a little cavity. That's a big cavity or a root canal or a crown or an extraction. So the very minimal, you know, brush and floss after every meal, go to the dentist twice a year. Now, cosmetically, you know, you know, where do you jump in? Well, whitening. I mean, yes, I invented Zoom tooth whitening. Uh, when I like to just mess around with people, I say, yeah, I invented Zoom. Then they're like, what? I said, I did. <laughs> and then people are so impressed until I tell them the rest of the truth, which is, okay, it was Zoom tooth whitener, but, um, but still impressive. And, um, that still is very you impressive. You know, whitening your teeth. You know, tooth whitening was actually discovered by accident. Did you know that? No. Ah, I'll give you a, a quick little history lesson. 
So about 1985, there was a periodontist who was doing periodontal surgery and there was a product on the market called Proxigel. It had been on the market forever. And he would have his patients use the Proxigel and gently brush it on his, their teeth. And it has hydrogen peroxide in it and that would help to kind of cleanse the tissue and kill bacteria, la di la la. And his thinking was, if I had a longer exposure period on the teeth, maybe the hydrogen peroxide would kill even more bacteria and help the tissue heal even faster. So he made custom trays. He took an impression. He then made a tray that fit the mouth. And he told the patients to place gel inside the tray, put the tray in their mouth, and go to bed. Well, after a week or two of doing this, these people are coming in. And not only did everything heal up, but it it looked like their teeth were lighter, were a whiter shade. And what they found was that by longer exposure of hydrogen peroxide on the tooth surface, you actually get the tooth to lighten by neutralizing the colored pigment in teeth. So it doesn't hurt the tooth in any way, shape, or form, but all of the colored particles in the tooth become clear and the teeth become lighter shade. And that's how teeth whitening was invented, or I should say discovered. And then what you did with Zoom, you took the same type of, uh, to speed it up, and you added... Um, so, uh, added yeah, kind of anybody who, who takes a chemistry class knows that if you want to increase a, the speed of any chemical reaction, you heat it. If you want to slow it down, you, you, you make it colder, right? So what we did with the heat light was the light and the heat from that light would accelerate the whitening product, and we were able to get the same results uh, with, with the, the same hydrogen peroxide gel in 45 minutes that would typically take two weeks of just you know using a tray and sleeping with it at night that is so interesting because we talk about that and now i know when i come and have mine done at your place and then yeah i have the trays after to kind of keep up with it of course some of us you know and there's the strips and all that stuff but of course that's the best way to do it so that's your first step when it comes to just having your teeth be healthy, it's preventative, and also then you got to whiten them. Right. Yeah, so if tooth whitening is all you need, if you have really nice teeth, just the color isn't great, that's easy. Let's go now, to the next step. Let's now. say yeah. you've got chips, you know. Well, the next easiest thing sometimes is we can just cosmetically shape the teeth. In the event that that would take off too much tooth structure, or you need more length, the next easiest thing would be bonding. The one thing that you have you know, to know with bonding though, word of caution, is that bonding typically only lasts like five to seven years. It's not strong like, like porcelain would be, like a porcelain veneer. So I would say the next thing after you know, just purely whitening your teeth would be to do some very minimal bonding. And then, of course, the next step would be either porcelain veneers or porcelain crowns or, or a combination of veneers and crowns. And in doing the difference between a veneer and a crown is in doing a veneer, and I've had veneers now for 25 years on my front teeth, in doing a veneer, you basically just reduce the front surface of the tooth and the edge, and the veneer comes back and just goes on the front and over onto the edge but not on the back of the tooth, okay? When you do a crown, then you're physically going all the way around the tooth and the crown fits over the tooth like, like a hat fits on your head. And those we use for teeth that are much more damaged and you know need a little bit more restoration. So on the back of your teeth, so going back to the veneers thing, so someone comes in with basically, they just want to have a beautiful smile. And maybe they don't have the prettiest teeth in the world. Because I know so many people that had teeth that were okay, 
maybe a little chipped, but they go, hey, I want those veneers. I want those beautiful veneers that you do. And, um, you know, because they're magical when you look at their smile after you do them because they, they are gorgeous, but look natural. They don't look like big chiclets. So most people then like that, that are coming in with decent teeth already with some sun damage and just maybe just they don't like the color. Those are 100% veneers. Not 100% veneers. Every case is so different. I mean, there'll be times a patient will come in and will do five veneers in one crown. Or there'll be a time when I'll just do a little bit of bonding on one or two teeth and then four or five veneers. So I think the most important thing is that if you're interested in cosmetic dentistry, go to the right person, you know, and the AACD is the American Academy of Cosmetic Dentistry. There's a website. So wherever you are in the United States, you can find an accredited member. Why accredited? Well, any dentist in the world can call themselves a cosmetic dentist. But in order to be an accredited member in the AACD, you need to go through a series of tests that shows a level of, of, of kind of knowledge mm -hmm. and expertise in the field of cosmetic dentistry. Now, one step above that is a fellow. So, you know, after I became accredited, I didn't stop there. I went on and I became a fellow. And there's only, I think, two in all of California, which is kind of the next step after that, which shows another higher level Training. of, you know, education and your aptitude for doing cosmetic dentistry. And so you did that also? I did. So, okay, did. now you have, you know, been on the doctors, you've been on all kinds of shows, you basically, you know, you're in the media all the time. Just watching your Instagram, of course, I see all these incredible transformations. This is going to be a crazy hard question to answer, but I have a feeling that you have it and you know it pretty clear. Your most memorable patient outcome Remember with one wonderful patient that you dealt with and, you know, how you always remember that patient, how the smile changed their life. I mean, I know wow. you got a lot, brother, but I'm talking about training that, you know, pick, yeah. pick one out of okay, five. Okay, this, you know? this, is, this, is, this is the biggest one. So you have to understand when I was doing Extreme Makeover, ABC scoured the country to find me the most challenging mouths in, in America, right? And we did a few cleft palate cases, always hard, always hard. But then they outdid themselves. They brought on Becky. Wow. Becky had bilateral cleft lip, cleft palate, which meant she didn't just have a cleft on one side, she had a cleft on both sides. And it was a real challenge. And um, the only way to restore this case, because she was missing her laterals, her entire pre-maxilla luxated. I mean, I, I, I said to her, I said, Becky, the only way I can fix your teeth is to take out your two front teeth, your central incisors, and make you a bridge from the eye tooth to the eye tooth, the canine to canine. And she said, Dr. Bill, I don't want to lose those teeth. I've had root canals on them. I've had apicos on them. I have done everything in my life to keep those teeth. And I said, Becky, when I push on the one tooth, the other one oh, also luxates. It also moves. I said, you'll be lucky if they make it to the elevator <laughs> in my building. I said, you got to yeah, get her. Yeah, get her. Come on. Yeah, this is like botched. I like, yeah, I said, you got to let me take them out. Paul, when we finished her makeover, she lost 40 pounds. The new smile, the new lips, the new this, the new that. She walked out. I kid you not. Her husband fainted. They, we had to stop filming and they had to give him oh CPR. My God. He, he literally, he hit the ground. She was a knockout and she pulled me aside and put her arm around me and said, Dr. Bill, I just want you to know 
for the first time in my life, for the first time in my life, I can walk into a room and just feel normal. See, that's a story. I mean, listen, we all have those kind of stories, you know, and we're lucky to have those stories. I know, because remember, it's how our patients feel. And obviously, sometimes, you know, we don't have the happiest patients, but that's, you know, what we what we bought into doing our cosmetic stuff. Well, the other thing is too, Paul, we don't, we don't walk in their shoes. We don't live in their world. I mean, do you understand what it's like to be a mother in delivery, giving birth to a child, and there's only one thing on your mind while, that ch while you're in labor? You know, is that child going to have lip, a bilateral yeah. cleft palate <clears throat> or, or not? Cleft lip, cleft. I mean, that's, she said she had two children and the entire pregnancy and the entire labor, she laid on that table praying as hard as she could that her children wouldn't have to endure what she endured her whole life. And thank goodness she, she had two beautiful, healthy kids that, that, you know, that didn't need to have surgery because they didn't have the cleft palate, the cleft lip. But, you know, being able to restore her function and her self-esteem. Oh, see, that's priceless. a beautiful story. I mean, I seen, remember, <clears throat> you did Extreme Makeover. Um, we did our maker makeover show for the UK. Brand new year. Brand, brand new year. And then, you. of course, you've been on the doctors um, so many times discussing since well since the beginning they they canceled it last year but you did that i don't know how many times um i used to sometimes i'd be you know when i was around and after i would see it the show it was interesting because either when you had great makeovers or always tidbits to learn about taking care of your teeth and it was interesting when it comes to veneers so let's say someone just can't come to you even if you're the best if they're going to go to someone or a doctor, what do they need to do to kind of make sure they're getting to the right doctor and are getting, if they need veneers, are there different types of veneers besides porcelain? So the first thing is, you know, definitely make sure that you're going to somebody who knows what they're doing. That's why I say if there's an AACD doctor in your area with you know, who's accredited, you can pretty much rest assured that you're in good hands, okay? Number two, if that doesn't exist in your area, make sure that you schedule an, a consultation and make sure that the photos that the dentist is showing you are their own before and after pictures because there are dentists that will use other people's pictures. The other thing that I would say is an immediate red flag is if you go to a dentist and they tell you you need crowns. Um, and I see so many people come in who are completely miserable because they went to a dentist, they thought they were getting veneers, and instead they got crowns on all their teeth. And they didn't want crowns, and they don't like the crowns they get. Well, what's the difference? Well, the difference between a crown and a veneer is that when you do a crown, you basically all the grind way, all the way around hmm. the tooth. And it's like, putting, it's like putting a hat on your head, right? When you do a veneer, you just take a little bit off the front surface. And in some cases, you may not even have to do any preparation. You might not have to grind any tooth structure away. So it, you know, it all depends on you know, what you're presenting with and what your goal is. So yeah, I know that when you're about to put on a crown, and I've seen this before, correct me if I'm wrong, like you just said. So you have the tooth that was coming up, and there's the back of it and the front of it. So you have to kind of grind it all away until, what, 15% of the tooth is left, the center point, or what? Uh, I mean, I would say probably more like 40% of the tooth. You know, I mean, think about it. Like, when you do a porcelain veneer, you only take off a thin layer of porcelain so that when you put the veneer on there, the tooth is the original thickness. If you just put a veneer over the tooth, 
without any reduction, most of the time you end up with big, thick, ugly, kind of chiclet. So teeth. that's where the chiclets come from is really when they look so fake is because they probably just slapped them on, clipped them on or something. A lot of times, yeah, a lot of times. And the other thing that a lot of people do wrong is they walk in and say, I want white teeth. Well, how white? You know, like if I'm going to do a smile, I want it to look natural. I mean, white is okay. Bright is okay. But I mean, there's a limit, you know, and there are some people who come in and say, I want them so oh, Jesus. fake looking I, mm. that they're just like, I want people to wear sunglasses. Well, you see it on botched. I mean, when these people come in with, with lips, you know, or whatever, I mean, some people they get carried away and the, you know, the, there's not a white enough color for them. You know, I always tell patients, if you want to have the most beautiful natural result, just let me do my thing. Cause I've been doing this for 40 years. And, and I know, you know, like w when I see somebody, it, it's like a canvas to me. I, I already paint that picture in my head. I know what I want it to look like. And if you want to have just a very beautiful, natural smile, you know, I, I'm pretty confident that I could do that. And just to be sure, what we do is called a trial smile. So while you're waiting for your new veneers to be made, I have a temporary that is shaped, you know, as closely to the final product as, as possible. Okay, so the temporary just put on the teeth and it kind of like popped on, clipped on, or glued on, are they glued on? Either they're kind of locked in by the undercuts or we actually adhere okay. them to the teeth, depending on how many we're doing and what the, the retention is. But the temporary should stay on. It usually takes about a week to a week and a half. All right. So let me ask you this. I remember I was talking to, I think, someone who I think is a friend of yours, but he was a, um, a cosmetic dentist from uh, Tennessee area. And it may have been Nashville, I think. And, or maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it was Texas. But he was using veneers or whatever you want to call them, but with without removing anything. Like you said, he was popping them on teeth. And his results were decent. They weren't, they weren't that big of chiclets at that point, so I don't know. Well, th these are called, yeah, these are called prepless veneers, okay? Now, for certain cases, you can get an excellent result. So let's say you're a patient with very small teeth that are kind of angled backwards. I can do prepless veneers on your teeth and they'll look perfect amazing but let's say that's not the case let's say you've got very big teeth so if you take a big tooth and make it bigger you're going the wrong direction yeah. right so that's again you know every case is is individual but you know i only use prepless veneers on patients that absolutely can pull it off okay that makes sense now let me because i had so many questions let me throw this at you too so some patients will come in with deflated lips. And remember, they don't want, some of them don't want to get filler. Because remember, there's risk with filler. Plus, they might right. look fake or just maybe, you know, it's expensive to keep going back more and more. But when it comes to involution of the, of the mandible or the dentition, how your lips kind of sink in involutionally, um, how does that happen that, right. you, that you lose your smile, basically? You know, sometimes as we age, what happens is everything drops, you know? So, you know, we've all seen somebody with, with a gummy smile, right? And yeah, gummy I'll smile. show you a picture. So this is a young man with a very gummy smile. Yeah, we can right? see that. Yeah. So we use Botox and after Botox, no more gummy smile. Yep. Okay, but how does that work? Well, Botox paralyzes the lip and it prevents you from being able to elevate the lip, right? However, nature gradually pulls everything down. So over many years, that young man with that gummy smile 
would have less of a gummy smile. But what happens if you don't start off with a gummy smile? What happens if you start off with a smile where when you smile, you barely show your teeth? Over time, as your lip moves down, you start to lose That's right. the teeth and you get to a point where even when you're smiling, it, it looks like That's right. you don't have any teeth. So we have a few options. Option number one is we send them to Paul and he does surgery and they, you do a lip lift. A second option is to build the teeth not only a little bit longer, but a little bit more forward. We call it in buckle version. Why? Well, it's just like a curtain. If a curtain comes straight down like this, it's one thing. But if you put something here, the curtain gets a yep. little bit shorter, right? So if we build the teeth more forward, the lip has a larger surface to go over, and it actually appears a lot shorter. I mean, I love that idea. Because I don't know how many times patients have come in and thought they need a filler, but really is a dentition, you know. Um, you know, and also right. whether they're from oral maxillofacial surgeons, if you have to sometimes bring the jaws out, uh, you know, the genioplasty or genioplasty where you bring the chin out, everything to match. So basically you can make the lips look somewhat normal again with doing this. And then the 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 big one, of course, is is the yeah. Lafort. This is a young woman that we did that on. And, and you work uh, with someone for that. Yeah, watch this. Oh, wow. Look at that chin. That was Stephen Kupferman in my building. Yeah, yeah, Steve is who I also use. Yeah, he's amazing. So, yeah, you and I are friends with Steve. I've known yeah, him. Stephen's amazing. And so we basically brought her entire maxilla back a and the, and the mandible oh. went forward? No, we didn't have to do the mandible, but just, no, the mandible was okay. The mandible was okay. But the, the maxilla had to come back. Yeah, if you look at this again, watch. You'll see the mandible doesn't move. Yeah, I see that. And by bringing back her maxilla, it actually made it look like she had a rhinoplasty too. It pushed it back right? in addition. Um, her jaw looked great. So, you know, so let me ask you, um, just because of our time, we're running out of time here. We've learned about basic dental hygiene. We learned about whitening teeth. We learned about bonding for small irregularities. And then going to the next step of a combination versus a full dental reconstruction of the mouth or a few teeth, depending on what you need. All this can be done, but the most important thing this comes down to, if you have good teeth, is hygiene first before everything starts to go south. Maintenance. Good old maintenance. I know that, listen, we already know that you've had four Lifetime Achievement Awards. I've had 21. 21. Yeah, your, your paper's outdated by a few years. I just got my, my, just got the, my 21st in the UK. I was, I was the first American dentist ever to on, be, they, be honored with a Lifetime Achievement Let me Award. Stud you. I'll tell you one thing, that and also, all right, because we have about a minute left. So two things. One, um, tell us how we can find you on social. And two, what's the deal with the Guinness Book of World Records? <laughs> okay, one, everything I have is under Dr. Bill Dorfman. So Facebook, Instagram, and my website. Um, the Guinness World Book of Records. So... Um, you know, we talked about LEAP and how passionate I am. If you want information on that, it's leapfoundation.com. And um, I was challenged to have my head shaved to raise money for LEAP. So Travis, the yeah. doctor on the doctors, shaved my head. We raised $121,000. And as I'm driving home bald, I thought, who does this? Probably nobody. So I had my publicist check Guinness and there was no world record for most money raised by shaving your head. So we Ooh. applied, and I, since it was on TV, we had proof and I got it. My second Guinness World Book record was when Katy Perry's makeup artist um, called me up and said, Doc, 
we need somebody to make a grill for Katie for her dark horse video. And I said, what's my budget? He said, it's $1,500. I said, BS. I called Cheryl, who owns 14 Carat. I said, give me a million dollars on consignment. I'm going to make a grill for Katy Perry. So we made the million dollar grill by Dr. Bill. Um, and uh, that was the most expensive oh grill ever God, made. Oh, my God. There we go. See, this is good. And you know what that comes from, Paul? I always say if there's only two things that I want a kid to get out of leap, if there's just two things that they walk away, it's these two. Number one, don't wait for opportunities in life. Make them. If I meet another millennial who tells me they're waiting for yes. the universe to do something, I want to like bang my head against the wall. The universe doesn't care about you. You need to care about you. And number two, when you get a great opportunity, Paul, in life, don't take it. Master it. Well, I was kind of saying, what? And then you said master it. Master it. We're going to actually, um, with that something, this great advice for all of us, uh, Dr. Bill, Billion Dollar Smile, uh, best-selling book, author there. We love you. Thank you for this, my friend. All right. And we hope you all tune in for more Demystify Beauty. Thank you for listening to Demystify Beauty, produced by Gotham Production Studios. If you have any questions for future episodes, please don't hesitate to reach out to us on Instagram at Demystify Beauty or email us at demystifybeauty at gmail.com. And don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. See you next time.